Good morning. I know. Well, we're going to learn a lot with our next guest. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Our next guest so, is Eric Ronberg from Cape Ann Museum. Yes, Eric is one of the world's most Can't renowned. Come on. Come on. <laughs> he is one of the world's most renowned mo ship model makers. His models, which take years to build, are in collections around the world, including the Smithsonian. Comfortable, Eric. Eric. Good to see you. See you too. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, and Eric is also the museum, the maritime curator at the Cape Ann Museum. So, Eric, we would love you to tell us all about the schooner, the history of the schooner, why it's important to Gloucester. Well, uh, the schooner did not have its origins in Marblehead, where supposedly the first one was uh, built, and. Uh, Someone remarked, uh, oh, how she schoons, and someone else said, well, a schooner let her be. Hmm. Uh, it actually had its origins about 40 or 50 years earlier in the colonial catches, which were growing in size, and in the process, uh, they were uh, altering their rigs, uh, making what was the jigger mast into a much taller uh, mast, uh, that we would now would call a mainmast. But uh, they, they, they didn't care at that point. Uh, it was just another catch uh, with uh, a longer, with a taller mast. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but what happened was when, once the word got out that uh, uh, the uh, schooner was, Andrew Robinson's schooner was, uh, uh, called that, uh, all of a sudden uh, schooners popped up in the in the vessel registries. <laughs> By the, uh, under the word schooner? Yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so about 50 of them uh, came on the scene about uh, oh, in less than two years after that. Really? So what year so, are we talking about then? Uh, we're talking about 1715, uh, uh, that area. Wow. Yeah. So, well, I'm sorry. Good. Well, I was just going to ask. First of all, maybe we should decide what the defining features of a schooner, what makes a schooner a schooner? Well, by modern standards, a schooner is a vessel uh, with two masts, fore and aft rigged, with a bowsprit, uh, with uh, staysail and jibs, uh, a foresail, a mainsail, and then uh, uh, Four, four and main topsails and, and a fisherman's staysail. Those were all added later, but uh, that didn't change the the, the term. Mm -hmm. So were they learning that by making that, and I'm not going to be able to use the right terminology, that sec the, the aft mast, a larger sail, was, was that making it faster? That was the factor. It was the it was the the the, the main mast that uh, that that grew out of the uh, the 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 jigger mast that was there hmm. and uh, that uh, or mizzen mast they may have called it. Uh, well, so Eric, at the height of schooner fishing in the area, how many schooners were out there? Thousands. Well, uh, pretty close to that. You're no kidding. Pretty close to that. Uh, Gloucester had, uh, I think at one point, she had something close to 500 schooners. So. Wow. And they were all fishing? They were fishing vessels? Uh, pretty much so. Maybe a small minority in the, in the coastal trade, uh, specializing in uh, uh, fetching uh, f uh, bait or... Uh, fish packing goods or something like that from other places. Uh, there was some, there was always some communication between Gloucester and Boston uh, mm -hmm. with regards to supplies and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. and schooners could solve that problem too. Yes. Right, but were they, they weren't used for, in, for instance, in the Suriname trade or in the big no. Uh, once you get once you get into uh, deep water sail, then the, the square rig uh, becomes uh, important uh, very quickly. Now there were some topsail schooners, schooners that set square topsails on their foremasts. Uh, That's like yeah, 
and they they were fairly common in the in the coasting trade if uh, if they were going any uh, any distance say say from uh, Canada down to uh, Gloucester mm -hmm. or from Gloucester to New York or something like that that would uh, that would be a sensible rig to have mm -hmm. so it sounds as if the schooner is the ship that really put Gloucester on the map in terms of fishing? I would say so, <laughs> very yeah. definitely, yes. Yeah. And uh, the fact that, uh, well, it was, in its day, it was exactly the right size for uh, the uh, type of work uh, that, that, it, that it had to do. If, uh, uh, if they were any larger, then uh, the question is, uh, would the uh, would the fish keep on a uh, on the trip uh, trip back to, to port if uh, if the fish were on ice? Now, if they salted the catch, uh, that was another story. But uh, even so, uh, there was uh, uh, there there just seemed to be a limit, uh, the practical limit to. Uh, uh, the amount of fish they could catch in a given period uh, using the gear they had and uh, making the, the time needed for, for the outward and, and, and homeward bound uh, trips. Mm -hmm. That's a complicated algorithm, I yeah. think, right? Yeah, there's a lot going on there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. in this, in the Schooner Fest, we are also going to see some medium and smaller schooners. And yes. I think there's one right over my shoulder, right? Well, actually, you've got uh, two pink stern vessels. The inner one is called the Chebacco boat. The and story The story is? Uh, yes. Oh, I see it. Oh, right. Yeah. And Ardell is a pinky. It's a pinky, okay. right. Uh, which, was a, which was a derivative of the Chebacco boat. This was, this was also part of the, the growth of the, of the coastal uh, fishery. Uh, where uh, tobacco boats were uh, uh, just making uh, short trips out, uh, uh, fill the hold with fish, uh, get it back to shore, and uh, uh, go on out again. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, the the pinky was uh, uh, well, it 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 was sort of intermediate uh, in its uh, versatility. Uh, uh, where there was a demand for, uh, or uh, where smaller cargoes could pay, then uh, and you, you had limited funds, and say you were in a small port and uh, you didn't have uh, much uh, uh, much of a local clientele uh, that would uh, in the area, then uh, that was the kind of boat you, you wanted for uh, for fishing. Mm. Now, Eric, you're the maritime curator at KPM Museum. Yes. Are there, so, so let's say for someone out there who hasn't been to the museum before, they come in, what can you help show them or tell them? Is it uh, historical stuff through archives? Are there exhibits there, current exhibits? How would you walk a, a, a guest through that experience? Well, uh, that's, uh, that's an interesting question because everyone who comes in the door has... Uh, has different ideas and different questions, mm. so you just have to to tackle them as best you can. Um, our exhibits in the past have been of a pretty general nature. Uh, uh, we we had we did make a uh, a major uh, change uh, to one of uh, uh, in one of our galleries with a a, a, a very. Uh, extensive exhibit on the mackerel fishery mm. which uh, explains that uh, fishery in a lot more depth than it has uh, in the past and uh, this may be the way we go with uh, certain other uh, uh, specific uh, topics in, in the Cape Ann fisheries. I, I will, um, because you won't say it Eric, I will add that there are three of your ship models in the Cape Ann Museum the Elsie and the, am I right? Uh, yeah, Elsie. Uh, the America. Uh, the America, but they've also added uh, a, a small diorama, a miniature diorama of uh, fishing on uh, George's Bank uh, 
one of the old hand liners where they fish from the rails. Mm. I love that and one. That Eric actually gave me a tour of these models recently. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And the landliner, as you can see it in the water, how it sits in the water. You see all the little fish in the little buckets. Yeah. And his his models are amazing. Absolutely amazing. And as I understand, every piece works on your models. Is that right? The winches? Well, on the larger scale, uh, that's that, that's so. When you get down to those miniature scales, then uh, uh, sometimes you have tricky. to make, make uh, a complicated gear out of a out of uh, a solid piece with a few with whatever detail is soldered in place that that sort of thing but the details there exactly the detail <laughs> is there and the detail is tells a story i mean the, the men working on each of these boats are doing something that is very specific and eric can tell you yeah. what they're doing yeah and it's really yeah. fascinating to see and they are always on display those three yeah. well the two models and the diorama is that right uh pretty much so so I got my answer then, Eric. Now, if someone goes to the museum and they just say, take me to Eric's models. Yes. And I want to get talked through this experience. It's true. And the Elsie is a beautiful yeah. model. Well, don't forget, we also have uh, uh, three very fine models by uh, Willard, Al uh, Willard Andrews. Uh, yes. uh, models of uh, schooner types that were very important, but we really didn't have uh, a very good uh, uh, examples of uh, uh, to show, and uh, they're, they're going to be uh, important in uh, future, in uh, more elaborate uh, future e exhibits as well. They really tell a, a comprehensive story of of the work that was happening in this harbor. That's great. Well, well we, we're right next door to the uh, basically to. Um, I'm going to give museum. you a tour. Yeah, yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> actually, no, we'll come meet Eric. But also, I ha do have to say the Fitzhenry Lane collection is spectacular. It's the largest collection of Fitzhenry Lane's paintings in the world. And Eric is the expert on the Fitzhenry Lane paintings. Oh, we'll have to have you back, Eric, sometime yeah. and talk about that. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, maybe the thing to do is uh, have a walkthrough tour at the museum. Maybe, um, I think we'll we maybe that. we do the show from the museum sometime. Yeah. And then uh, also you want to see his drawings because uh, uh, Right now, they're they're pretty much in storage due to their fragility. But uh, uh, there are some that uh, I think would be of uh, uh, great interest, uh, where we actually have the drawing and, and the painting that, that was derived from it. And you can always tell an artist by their drawing, right? What, what they can really do. Very much so. Yeah. And I, uh, I actually have been working with Eric on a little project, and I have you quoted as saying. The Fitzhenry Lane paintings are actually documents. Uh, absolutely, uh, they're uh, they're as good as photographs. Mm, of what was maybe happening. better. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly, because they can't capture each one. They, yeah, and they cover a period uh, in color that uh, photography was either non-existent or it was in black and white. And, uh, right. Right. Well, we'll have to check it out for sure. Yes. Right down on Pleasant Spring, Gloucester. Eric Ronberg, the Maritime Curator for Cape Bay Museum. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Yeah, we appreciate the expertise. That was fascinating. Yeah, thank you for so, taking the time. Yeah, thank yeah. you.